For today's lesson, you are actually going to be getting your sewing machines out, following along with this video. And in this video today, you will see the process from start to finish of how to get your machine out, all the way to how to store it, and all about the sewing machine parts and everything in between. Make sure that you watch the whole entire video and that you listen to all of the things that I say. While you watch, you'll also be filling out your uh, ID card that has the picture of the sewing machine on it. If you have any questions throughout the process, just let me know. And one thing that's really important to do while you watch is you're actually going to be interacting with the machine. So if I'm showing you how to turn the hand wheel, you are going to practice turning the hand wheel. If I am showing you how to move the stitch selector, you're going to do that too. So just make sure that you are uh, staying with the video, that you practice all the steps I show you, and that you familiarize yourself with all of the sewing machine parts. I'm just coming in from the classroom area and I'm going to pick up my sewing machine. So I'm going to reach inside the cubby that has my machine. I'm going to look at the number 12 and it's in cubby 12. So whatever your number is, make sure you grab the correct machine. Pull the machine out just slightly. Grab a hold of the handle to kind of get a hold of it and then reach under the arm of the machine with one hand and grab the handle with the other. When you carry it back to your spot, I want you to hold it just like this in two places with the handle and under the arm of the machine. And as you're headed back to your seat, you're going to head this direction to the classroom. Right, I have set my sewing machine down on the table and now I'm going to get ready to plug it in. First things first, we need to make sure that your table itself is plugged in. So you will follow the cord coming from the closest one to you, make sure that it is plugged in. And to double check, you can see that there's some blue lights that are turned on on the USBs. That means there is power going to your table. So then you're ready to plug in your sewing machine to the table. Over on the side, you have the plug for the foot pedal, the plug for the outlet, and then this is the on off switch. So when you are getting ready to turn your machine on, you always wanna make sure that these are plugged in really nice and tightly. And to power on your machine, you flip it from the O to the vertical line. So I'm pushing the vertical lines going up and down. I push that back and now my machine is turned on. I have light up here lighting up my monitor and then I also have a light under the machine that indicates that the machine is turned on. To turn it off, we just flip it back to the side with the O. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the machine on again and I'm gonna go through the number diagram. Number one, hand wheel. The hand wheel is over on the right side of the machine. It's right here and you will use the hand wheel when you want to raise and lower the needle manually. I'm gonna grab a hold of the hand wheel and I'm going to always turn it toward me. So I turn it and it goes toward me. I always kind of look at my thumb and my hand and how it rotates, it's going in this direction. So my thumb is gonna to come toward me. Turn the hand wheel toward you and as you do, your needle on the sewing machine is going to be moving up and down. Number two is the stitch selector. The sti stitch selector is the large dial on the front of the machine right here. When you turn your machine on, it automatically is on a stitch one, which is just a straight stitch. But depending on the directions, you may be asked to turn your stitch selector in order to select one of the other 50 stitches. To do that, you just take the dial and you turn it in either direction. If I turn it to the left, it's going to go back to 50 and it would count back from 50 to 49 if I continue to turn it left. If I start back at one, let's say I need to get to a zigzag, which is a stitch five, that's a pretty common stitch. I turn to the right and it gets me to stitch number five. Now what does the stitch selector actually do? It changes the direction of the needle. So when we are on a stitch one, the needle is just going to go straight. It's always gonna stay in a straight line and it's gonna go up and down and up and down. When I turn it to a five to create that zigzag, the needle is gonna go right, left, right, left, right, left. So it is very important to read the directions on a project to determine which stitch you're supposed to have it turn to. Go ahead and look at the stitch length 
and stitch width. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my machine back to A1. And if I am looking at the stitch length, that is how long a stitch is going to be, um, whether it is like an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch long. So it is the length of it. And it shows you right here those stitch lengths. To increase my stitch length on the top button, I hit the plus, plus, and it just increases up to five. A five is what is considered a basting stitch. It's really long and it's meant to be temporary. If I need to reduce my stitch length and make it smaller, I hit the minus, 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 minus until I have the size that I want. 2.5 is a standard stitch length. Number four on your card is stitch width. Stitch width is this button down here. And there's a diagram showing you what it would look like with a zigzag. A smaller stitch width will give you a small width of your zigzag. And the wider that you do it, the larger your zigzag would get. So stitch length and stitch width. If you are doing stitches one and two, you really do only work with the stitch length because you're not making the stitch any wider at all because it's just going in a straight line. You would, however, use the stitch width, this one down here, if you're doing stitches four, five, and six. Number five is the bobbin winder. The bobbin winder is only used when you're winding the bobbin. This is not a feature you will have to use every time you sew, but when you have an empty bobbin, this is the bobbin, when you have an empty one and you need to refill it, you will use this bobbin winder to do that. I will show you in a future lesson exactly how to wind it, but the bobbin sits on the bobbin winder and you have to push it from its starting position over to the right to engage it. When you're done winding your bobbin, you pull it back to the left to disengage it. What that means is I'm gonna do a little demo of the needle. So I'm gonna lower my presser foot. I'll teach you how to do it later, but I lower my presser foot and I put my foot down on the foot pedal. If you'll notice, the needle goes up and down, up and down. However, if I take my bobbin winder and push it into the engaged position over in the right, and now I put my foot on the foot pedal, the bobbin winder starts to spin, but the needle does not move up and down. I tell you this because sometimes you will come in in your machine, you might feel like it's not working because your needle doesn't move up and down. What you then need to make sure is that the bobbin winder is disengaged. It needs to be over to the far left position. Number six is the spool pin. The spool pin is located on the top of the sewing machine by the handle right here. This is where your spool of thread will, will sit. And again, in the threading videos, I'll show you how to do that. When we get into the specific threading videos, you will see more clear instructions about these thread guides. But number seven on your card is thread guides. There are several of them on your machine and they are extremely important when threading your machine correctly. So right here, this metal hook is a thread guide. Back here, this was number one. Back here is a little plastic ridge. That is thread guide number two. Probably the most important of all of the thread guides is number eight. It is the thread take up lever. Right now on this machine, we can't really see it. And the reason we can't see it is because the needle is down. So one thing I want you to get in a habit of always is always making sure that you end your seams with your needle in the highest position. The easiest way to do that is to always end by pressing your needle up and down button. When you do that, this silver piece inside of the four thread guide came up to the top. That silver piece is the thread take up lever. And when it is in the highest position, it releases the tension on the thread. So when I raise my presser foot, pull my thread out, it releases it. If I miss the thread take up lever 
Or if I try to move my thread and the thread take up lever is down a little bit, it does not release the thread like it should. So that part is extremely important. Item number nine is the tension control. Yours should always be on a four unless you're working on an advanced project that has you change the tension. For general everyday use on these machines, it will always stay on a four. Number 10 is my absolute favorite feature of these newer sewing machines. It is the up down needle button. To use it, you just hit it with your finger. What it does is it lowers and it raises the needle. As I showed you in the previous step, that is really important in making sure that your thread take up lever is in the correct position. This makes it easy for you because if you end your seam by using the needle up button, you always end up with that thread take up lever where it needs to be. Number 11 is the reverse button. It looks like a little U-turn and we use that when we are finishing a seam. It's used to reinforce the end almost like tying a knot. To use it, you either hold it down with your finger or if you wanna go a little bit more quickly, you have your foot on the foot pedal while you hold your finger down on the reverse button. You can do one reverse stitch at a time by pushing the button, letting go, pushing it again, and then it will do one reverse at a time. Usually we will do three at a time. Number 12 is your needle. Your needle is right after number six thread guide. And this is different from a hand sewing needle. A machine needle, it has the top and the eye of the needle is at the base of it or the point of it. Whereas a hand sewing needle would have the eye at the top and the point at the opposite end. Number 13 is the presser foot. The presser foot is right in here. It is just underneath the needle and its job is to hold the fabric in place while the fabric is being pulled through the machine by another part coming up called the feed dogs. So the presser foot holds the fabric in place. It presses it down. There are many types of presser feet. The one you're looking at is the most common one that we'll, we will be using. It has the name J. It is a J foot and we can see that on the foot. It has that J carved out. You will know which foot to use by looking at the monitor and whichever stitch you have selected. So I'm on stitch one. It tells me to use the J foot. If I turn the dial to a seven, that stitch wants me to change out my foot and put on a G foot. If I am installing a zipper, I will install a different foot. It is called a zipper foot. There are lots of different types of feet. The zipper foot right here and the regular foot that we just have on there, the J foot. Those are the two most common ones that you will use. Item number 14, presser foot lifter. The presser foot lifter raises and lowers the presser foot. In most cases, the presser foot will be lowered during sewing and raised when you're finished. So right now the presser foot is down and if I want to raise it, I reach in. This is it, it's this gray lever. I just pull it up and that raises up the presser foot. When I am ready to sew, I have my fabric in place and ready to start sewing, I will lower the presser foot. You'll do this a lot, raise and lower, raise and lower. I want to show you one little quick tip. So if you begin sewing or you're, you think you're ready to sew and you put your foot on the foot pedal, which I'm going to do here, and it beeps at me and it gives me that error message on my screen, you might think you've done something really wrong, but really all you need to do is lower your presser foot. Your machine does not want to sew unless that presser foot is down. Now that the presser foot is down, if I put my foot down on the foot pedal, it starts to sew, okay? So again, if I have my presser foot up and I start to sew, error message. So lower that presser foot and proceed. 
Number 15 is the throat plate. It is the silver area on the machine. It's metal and it contains measurements that are one eighth of an inch spaced apart. And you use those increments to know how to line your fabric up when you are given seam widths. Number 16 are your feed dogs. They are right underneath the presser foot, and if you feel your finger across them, they feel jagged. I call them little teeth. The feed dogs are what feeds the fabric through the machine. So it is going to be used with that presser foot. The presser foot holds the fabric down against the feed dogs, and as the feed dogs move, they rotate the fabric towards the back of the machine. Number 17 is the bobbin case. The bobbin case has a little switch right here to access it. So we're gonna pull that little switch over, release the bobbin cover, and the bobbin case is down here. This is what will hold our bobbin when we are sewing. There's a thread guide down here that you will learn when you learn how to thread your machine. The other part of 17 is that bobbin cover. It covers up the bobbin case. And again, you slide that little dial over to remove the bobbin cover. There is one part of it that has a little point. That point is going to fit underneath that little metal piece. So it's gonna fit under that. And then it just pushes down to lock in place. Item 18 is the bobbin thread cutter. So when we thread the bobbin or put the bobbin in to the bobbin case down here, we will go through a very specific thread guide path in order to have it in the appropriate spot. This right here leads us to a little blade. That is number 18, the bobbin thread cutter, right inside of that path. Number 19 is the speed control. You have three main speeds, one, two, and three, and it just keeps getting faster as you get to three. Typically, it, when you're starting out in sewing and learning, you'll start at a one, and then as you begin to feel comfortable, you will increase your speed. A couple of additional features that are not on your card. First of all, you have a drawer right here that if this was your at-home machine, you could store things in. So I just grab a hold of it with my thumb and kind of pull down, and there is a little storage area down here. In class, I would like you to leave that empty. Do not put things in there because it kind of junks up the machines for the other kids who are using them. The other thing that this drawer is, is it can be released and then you can have an arm if you're sewing things that are circular. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get my hand on that drawer and I'm going to pull it off to the left side. So as I kind of pull it towards the left, it comes off. So it's just a completely separate piece and we use that if we have something circular that we need to wrap around in order to get up underneath that presser foot. To put that back on, we are going to just line it up. There's like a little path that it slides across and you push it back in place. The thread cutter is on the side of your machine here and it is used when you are finishing the end of a seam so you have finished and you've pulled out your thread, your bobbin thread, you have two strings almost always, and you will run them across that blade and it will cut them apart. I'm not exactly sure why this happens, but one complaint I have about this machine is that this double needle button gets hit sometimes on accident and you don't realize you do it. On your screen, what will happen is it will show the picture of two needles side by side. And when you try to do anything with your stitch selector, it will give you this error code E8. So a lot of times kids have no idea what to do to fix that. I want you to remember this and look at those two needles on the screen and remind yourself, oh yeah, all I need to do to fix that is I need to hit this button until only one needle shows up. So now I've got one needle on my screen and I should be good to go. I can turn the stitch selector again. When you are finished for the day, I want you to make sure 
that your presser foot is in the down position, your needle is down, and your machine is turned off. So the lights go off, and once you have powered your machine off, then you may unplug your machine from the outlet. To do that, I would like you to grab from the plug. So you are going to grab a hold of the black plug and pull it out. Please do not grab the cord and yank it out. That will damage the cord. Plug and pull. All right, great job guys. So the last thing we have to do is really important and I kind of get serious about this with you all in class. So you're going to be putting your machine away. And so what you need to do is you have your power cord and your foot pedal and you are going to start out with your foot pedal and wrap that black cord end around it until the two cords are even. Okay, so the two cords are now even and now I just continue to wrap, wrap until I can tuck it nice and tight inside the arm of the machine here. Let me show you there. So it's inside the arm of the machine, all nice and neat. See how these are pretty even and straight. They're not drooping down or hanging out the back of the machine. Um, we would also, before putting this away, you would make sure that you had unthreaded your machine. So no spool left on the spool pin, no bobbin left in your bobbin case. And you will, just like you did to get it out, you will pick it up by the handle and your hand underneath the arm and you will go carry it back to your cubby. All right, so I'm bringing my sewing machine back to the cubby. Um, I will make sure that I set it in there and I have support on the machine still so I don't accidentally drop it. I'm going to lower my handle, but I still have a hold of it with the arm of the machine. And I am going to push that guy back all the way into the cubby. Now, what I will do with your class is I will come back here and I will take a look at the machines and see how they look. And if they are not wrapped up nice and tight, I will say, all right, person with machine number 13, come on back. You'll have to come redo your work. So make sure you do it right the first time.